Hello and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome back to all you regular listeners. Thank you for coming another day. Uh, we are on episode 992 since this podcast began in 2022. And I just love that. I love to see what God has done. And uh, this is episode 262 for uh, this year, for 2024. And it's just a, such a, do- a joy to think about God's Word with you each day. Um, and welcome back to, or welcome anew, I should say, to anyone who's found us for the first time. It is no accident that you are here today, friend. So please don't run off. Uh, Please stick around for a bit as we think about God's Word together. And I want you to know that I do continue to pray for you regularly, that the Lord would draw you closer to Him and give you more of that desire to know Him and to know His Word, and that you will be very intentional about making time each day to think about Him and to think about His Word. Oh, friends, it makes all the difference. Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He has so graciously given us um, many of his words, the word that was breathed out by him, um, and that we have that in our 66 books of the Bible, and I am so thankful that he would love us so. You know, he didn't have to do this. Uh, that we didn't have to, he didn't have to allow us in a time such as this to have access. But for those of us who have been uh, given access, for those of us who live in parts of the world um, in which it is not a, a crime to study God's word, uh, may we not take that for granted. May we spend time with with him. May we hide this, store it up in our heart that we may know him more and that we may not sin against him. And if you didn't do it much yesterday, just purpose you're going to do it more today. We're not guaranteed tomorrow, friends. Uh, we have today. And uh, what better way than to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to seek you, Lord. I'm going to draw near to you and um, see what you would want me to know. Uh, please know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so lit, send me a message sometime and let me know what the Lord's doing in your life as you're spending more time with him. And also, uh, please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone you think may receive a blessing from it. Well, our verse for the day for September the 18th, 2024, comes from the book of Psalm again. Psalm chapter 9, verse 18, and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. For the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. Oh, friends, what a wonderful reminder Uh, God does love his children, and he does love the needy and the afflicted and uh, those who uh, seem from the world's eyes to have no hope. Um, He is our hope, and I'm excited for us to think about this, to look at this psalm yet another day. You know, this is our third time in this Psalm 9. And there is just so much, of course, I love all the words and all the verses, uh, but there's so much here, and especially in a time such as this. And so I'm excited for us to think about this and um, to think about where we are in the scripture, to think about um, who wrote this, what was going on, and it's so important for us to do that. That's why we take time to do that with each verse, to Uh, because uh, you can get into danger if you just pluck out a verse and don't think about the context. Context is uh, of utmost importance. We want utmost importance. We want to see uh, where the verse that we choose for the day fits in um, the section of scripture that it is written in. Uh, This helps us to understand the original intent. This helps us to Uh, remember it, to recall it, and to be able to share it. And it is so important for us to not only read God's Word, but to study it, and then to live out what we learn, and then to share it. And we can be in real danger of um, having the wrong 
um, interpretation in our in our mind if we don't uh, seek the Lord's guidance and if we don't get that appropriate context. I heard a preacher say um, recently, and it is it's just such a wonderful explanation that there is one interpretation of Scripture, and that's what the Lord intended, and that's what His Holy Spirit. Uh, when he so uh, wills it, will help us to understand. But there are often many applications uh, for each scripture, and that is, um, we'll see that frequently. You know, one person may read something, and because of that truth that is found there, uh, they may apply it to their situation a certain way, but there is one interpretation given by the Holy Spirit, uh, several applications. And so I'm excited for us to park here and think about this today. So we are in the Psalms. The Psalms are in the Old Testament. And uh, we know that the Old Testament begins with the five books of the law. Then it moves to Old Testament history, then to what is known as the wisdom and poetry literature, which is where we are today and then the major prophets and the minor prophets. So it's very straightforward the way that this is organized. Um, The Psalms are, uh, it's the largest book, the largest collection that we have in our scriptures, and there are 150 of those. Now, this collection was known as Praises, or the Book of Praises, and it is still very much used as a book of praise, a book of prayers, a book of hymns. Uh, Many of these we will see uh, were meant to be set to music. And uh, we know that uh, there were multiple authors, multiple human authors, I should say, of these these collection. It doesn't read as a um, as a narrative, as like the books of history, uh, but it's um, just these several different uh, collections of. Uh, praise and prayer and worship and the uh, different psalmists pouring out their heart to God. And we see such wonderful examples and blueprints of how to pray and talk to God in every situation. These psalms apply in every situation when things are going well when things are not going well, when you don't understand how much longer you have to wait for something, when you don't understand why uh, difficult things are happening, um, you could still uh, see how uh, each of the psalmists would pour out their heart to God. And it's such a wonderful example that uh, we can say all the hard things that are on our hearts as well as all the good things that are on our hearts and We should do all of that, Um, and I just love it when we're in the Psalms. Now, we know that um, these writings spanned over about 900 years, all the way from Moses. There's one of his writings in here from around uh, 1405 B.C. or somewhere in there, all the way up to right after the... um, exiles who had been exiled to Babylon returned to Jerusalem. And so it's about 900 years that we see uh, of these different psalmists. There are several different ones. Most people think of David when they think of the psalms. He wrote 73 of those. Solomon wrote two of them. Um, Moses, as I mentioned, wrote one. The sons of Korah wrote some. Asaph. There, There are several different writers of the Psalms. And then there are, um, I believe, about 50 that we don't know who wrote these. The other interesting thing about the Psalms is that there are, in 116 of those, uh, there are superscripts or a little additional information. It may say a Psalm of David or from the sons of Korah. And then it may tell us uh, that it was for the choir master or that it was to be played um, with the strings or something like that. And so those are very uh, interesting and helpful uh, bits of information. We see the Psalms quoted throughout Scripture, and I love that. I love it that we could go back to that. But such a blessing any time that you're in the Psalms. Now, we know uh, that... 
Uh, the original Hebrew text uh, had it written as there's a book one, uh, two, three, four, and five. But I don't know that we know exactly why they were divided that way. Um, and you will often see that there will be some psalms grouped together uh, with similar themes, but sometimes it will jump around just like we saw that, that similar similarly with the Proverbs. But we were in this Psalm 9 uh, a couple of other days this month, and we've spent some time there. Um, we know that David wrote this psalm, and it says that it's for the choir director. So this was likely sung. And it's an Almus Laban, and I do not know what that is. I can't find <laughs> any reference to what that is. Um, but we see that David was giving thanks and praise in the first half of this psalm. And then in the latter half, he's uh, he's asking for God's help. He's uh, giving his supplications, asking God to supply his need and to, to make something come about. He's requesting that. And it's a good, uh, yet another good blueprint of how he acknowledges who God is and his righteousness and his holiness and praises and worships him um, and then comes before him with his request. And it's thought that Psalm 9 and 10 went together very much. And as we talked about um, the previous days that we've been here, you will often see in David's Psalms as that uh, he's, it's just a stream of what's going on in his heart and his mind. He will pray to God and then it's like he's turning around talking to himself and then he's uh, talking to whoever is listening or whoever else is in the congregation. And you will often see that. So, um, Sometimes it, you'll say, well, they, they've changed who they're talking to here. And yes, that's important. But don't we do the same? I mean, there are times that I will be talking to someone and then I'll turn around and whisper a prayer to the Lord. And then I'll say to myself, oh, you need to do this or don't forget that. It's very much the way that our mind works. And so uh, we see it in a written form with David here. And so let's uh, reread this psalm together to get the full picture and to remind us kind of the tone and the setting. And then we will focus in on our verse for the day. It says in verse one, I will give thanks to Yahweh with all my heart. I will recount all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you, for you have maintained my justice and my cause. You have sat on the throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations. You have made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy has come to an end in perpetual ruins, and you have uprooted the cities. The very memory of them has perished. But Yahweh abides forever. He has established his throne for judgment, and he will judge the world in righteousness. He will render justice for the peoples with equity. Yahweh also will be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of distress. And those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you, O Yahweh, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to Yahweh who abides in Zion. Declare among the peoples his acts, for he who requires blood remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Yahweh. See my affliction from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation." The nations have sunk down in the pit which they have made, in the net which they hid. Their own foot has been caught. Yahweh has made himself known. He has executed judgment. In the work of his own hands, the wicked is snared. The wicked will return to Sheol, even all the nations who forget God. And here's our verse. For the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. Arise, O Yahweh, do not let man prevail. Let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Yahweh. Let the nations know they that they are but men. 
Oh, I love what we see here in David's heart's cries. He's pouring out his heart to the Lord. He's praising the Lord for what he's done. He's praising the Lord for his righteousness and his justice and how he um, has taken care of some of those enemies. And uh, we know that all of God's enemies will be taken care of eventually in God's timing. Um, And then we see in this latter half that uh, David is is really pouring out his heart to God and asking God to be gracious to him and to see who has come against him when he talks about see my affliction for the for those from those who hate me. You know, affliction is that kind of pressing in is being pressed and squeezed and and chased on all sides. And we know that God knows all and that he sees all. But David is saying, see what's happening to me, even though certainly God does. And and then he says, you who lift me up from the gates of death. He's David is saying, oh, Lord, take notice of what's going on to me. And then uh, he says uh, that I may recount your all your praise praises that in the gates of the daughter of Zion, I may rejoice in your salvation. David saying, you know, come to my rescue, help me uh, so that I may give you the thanks and the praise. And uh, it, oh, that that were our cry when we're having a difficult time, not just rescue me, but rescue me for your glory. Rescue me that I can tell more of the world of what you've done. Rescue me that I may recount and give thanks to you like what we read in the first couple of verses of this psalm. And, um, you know, that's why we go through one of the reasons we go through difficulties. But in everything that happens, it's so that God should get the glory. And so uh, it's just such a wonderful uh, example here in David's life here. And then he talks about those nations who have been wicked and evil and how uh, their punishment, their the justice that is due to them is coming. And in verse 17, he says, the wicked will will return to Sheol, even all the nations who forget God. So those who are against him, those who have had no regard for him, those who have forgotten him, um, they will receive what is due to them. Just like all of us will, friends, if we do not believe in the Lord Jesus and put our trust and faith in him, we will get what is due for us. For those of us who have accepted his gift of grace and salvation and his mercy, uh, we will not get what we deserve. Uh, Jesus took that on himself, and so we don't have to, and I'm just so thankful for that. Um, but in our in our verse, he, he, uh, David reminds us that the needy will not always be forgotten. So those who have been afflicted, those who are in need, uh, those who seem to be pushed to the side will not always be afflicted forgotten nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever and why is that it's because god is faithful and when we look here if we look up um in the hebrew and i do this often i when i'm studying i'll look up in an interlinear bible which uh, will tell you the original hebrew words and then you can click on or look on each of those hebrew words and look up a definition for those and when we look up for the needy will not always be forgotten it's it um, implies, if you look up that Hebrew word for that, um, those in need, those in want, those who are poor. Um, and then it says, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. If we look up that word for hope, it's the expectation. So their expectations won't be lost forever. They will have something to look forward to. And the, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. The interesting thing about that word afflicted that was used here, when you look up it in the Hebrew, it means poor and humble and lowly and meek. And one thing that you notice about God is he is for, um, and I don't want this to sound in any way irreverent, but he truly is for the underdog. He is for the downcast and the oppressed and that one that has been 
pushed down. Um, he's he um, cares for everyone. He cares for the orphan. He cares for the widow. He cares for the one that's been cast aside. And that is God because he knows that that is all of our states in reality. All of us are um, or have been at some point enslaved by sin and oppressed by sin and blind and deaf to what is what is the truth until our eyes are open, until we've been set free because of what we have in Christ, until we are no longer a slave because we have because of what we have in Christ. And and so this was both uh, for sure in a physical sense. I am convinced that David was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write this, for the needy will not always be forgotten. And why is that? It's because of Jesus. It's because God takes care of his people also. You know, but even up till before Jesus came and walked on the earth, God was still an advocate for those who were downtrodden and those who had not been uh, treated right. And the hope of the afflicted um, will not perish forever because we have hope in him. All of our hope is in him. He is, like we talked about back up in verse 9, he will be a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of distress. That is part of God's character. And it's something that is so important for us to remember. Our hope is in him. If we trust him completely, he will take care of us. His ways, as we talk about over and over again, are the are the highest ways and the best ways and the truest ways. And he loves his children and takes care of his children. And there are several Psalms and even in Isaiah where it talks about hope and some in Jeremiah. Uh, but I I looked this one up and oh, what a blessing. This is another Psalm of David uh, and it talks about hoping in him. It says in Psalm 27, Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strong defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, I, my heart will not fear. The war arise against me, in this I trust. One thing I have asked from Yahweh, and that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of Yahweh all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yahweh, and to inquire in his temple. For in the day of calamity he will conceal me in his shelter, in the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with loud shouts of joy. I will sing and I will sing praises to Yahweh. I love that. And then when you hop down to uh, verse 13, it says, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of Yahweh in the land of the living. Hope in Yahweh. Be strong and let your heart take courage hope in Yahweh. Don't you just love that? And then it reminds me too about what Jesus said in the Beatitudes. You know, if we hop over to the Beatitudes in, I believe it's in Matthew chapter 5, it says uh, in verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit. And that reminds me, you know, the needy, the afflicted, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the lowly, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And it goes on and on. And friends, it matters to God. And so if we humble ourselves and we uh, know that he is our hope, that he is our light, he is our salvation, he will take care of us. Our hope will not perish forever. Our hope is in him. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Oh, what a blessing. And so uh, this psalmist wrote this before he knew of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit inspired him to write it, and it still tells us the character of God. So may we be encouraged. May we be reminded 
that our hope is in him and we do have that true eternal hope it's an anchor for our soul and i'm just so thankful for that friends be encouraged uh, tell somebody else about this today blessings to you until next time